All right guys, so today this video is going to be about teaching a wild horse to lead. I'm working today with Mr. Promise. It is um, another day in his training and he's doing so well at finally starting to engage a little bit. He's starting to be interested and he's starting to relax with me in the pen. So obviously last time we worked on putting the halter on and I got him to where I can willingly slide that halter on his face. Uh, the next step I'm going to do is I just want to reassure him that, hey, it's all right. I want to encourage him to come up to me because I'm asking him to yield forward on that halter. So you can see here I'm just gently pulling on the halter. I'm kind of moving his face. I'm not really leaning against him. I'm just using my hands to put pressure. He moved his feet a little bit there backwards away from the pressure, which is a natural reaction for him to fight against it. So I'm just gently kind of moving that rope around. And I'm going to ask him to step out sideways because he's pretty locked up forward. So I'll lean him that way. And when his feet adjust just the slightest bit, I give him that release. I can pretty well just pull him over sideways because of the way a horse is built, but you really can't pull him forward. So I start by teaching him to move his feet slightly forward by pulling off to the side. And when he takes a step, I give him a release on that rope. I go up and pet him on the face so that he's not getting anxiety about coming up to me. Because the last thing I need is for him to be shy about coming up to me. Because then he's just going to fight me all that much more. So then I rub him again. And just letting him know that it's alright. And I'm going to ask him for another step. So I pull forward and kind of sideways. He takes that step forward and I drop that rope. So he got pretty soft pretty quickly about moving from side to side. So I just keep working it again and again until I'm sure he's getting it. Right here is a little stickier. He doesn't like his right side so much. He moved his feet so I gave him a release, but he really didn't come forward so I went right back to it. There he did come forward so I gave him a rub on the forehead. That seems to be his favorite thing. So here I ask for forward. He doesn't give it. I keep the pressure on, but I start moving sideways. There I got a step. Good boy. And so right there he's really just adjusting his front feet. I don't actually have any forward movement. He's just moving those front feet around. So I just keep working on this till he really starts to get it through his head. He's got himself backed in that corner pretty well, so I'm having to move around a bit for him. Here he kind of fights backwards, but he's thinking. Right there he's shutting me out a little bit, but I'm just going to keep gently asking him. There he kind of thought about it. His ears perked up. He moved his feet forward, but then he wants to leave. You can see him looking away. So I'm just putting the pressure on him again. He's really thinking about leaving. There he gave me the slightest bit of forward, so I give him some slack in that rope. Little release, big pat, good boy. So right there I'm actually encouraging him to reach out. I don't want to just invade his space and pet him on the face if he's just shutting down. So I kind of hold my hand there and I wait for him to engage with me. hes You can see how shut down he is right there. He's just kind of hanging out, not really doing anything, so I back off. So here I'm going to ask him to move his feet again. Good boy. That time I gave him time to think about it and he really came to me. So there I'm going to reward that. Good boy. He wasn't sure about that scratch, but that's okay. He's still very wild at this point. you got to remember that he's only been wearing the halter for a day or two. So I don't want to push it too hard. I want to keep it nice and positive for him. But I do need to get control of his feet. So here I'm just giving him a good, nice rubbing, messing with his forelock, messing with his ears, all the little things that you can do just to start getting them more quiet around you. The more you touch them, the more relaxed they get. I'm going to ask him for a tighter step towards the fence. He's not sure if he wants to take it, but he did, and you can see him perk up there right afterwards too. He knows he's going to get a reward there. He knows I'm going to rub him on the face, and so he's starting to think more. Right there he wants to fight me a little bit. And so he wanted to pivot around and turn and face me, but he wanted to back up while he did it to maintain his direction, or to maintain his distance. I want him to step up. I'm not so worried about the sideways. I just want him coming forward. Right there, that was much better. There, he's kind of backing away, so I keep the pressure on. There, he comes mm, not quite forward. Still fighting a bit. So even though he turned to face me, he's not moving forward yet. And that's what we're trying to teach. There's one step. There's a better step. Give him that slack. He's licking and chewing. So now he understood that. 
what I was asking for, and so he kind of relaxed a little bit. There he goes again. Good boy. Nice and forward there. He went straight ahead that time because he didn't have anywhere to go sideways. Even though it was a tiny little step, big reward there, letting him think about that. He decides he's going to maybe move away a little bit because he's not so comfortable with that distance. I'm going to ask him to step back up into my space again. He really doesn't want to do it. Very uncertain, very hesitant. And I just gently, I'm not going to up the pressure because that's just going to make him more upset. But I am going to keep him kind of annoyed till he takes that step. There he licks and chews and relaxes. I'm going to give him a rub. Good boy. Here I'm going to go to a different spot now because he relaxed and I'm not going to keep drilling that same difficult spot till he really gets the hang of it. Right there he immediately went forward which is pretty nice. Good, one more step. So then I'm going to reward him again. You notice I'm not in a huge hurry. I'm just kind of letting him think about it, letting him process. And we're just gently asking. There he gave me a one step. There he finishes out the second. And I'm going to ask for another. Gently moving his face, not leaning against him. I don't give him anything to brace against. I just pressure, 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 pressure. Little pulses on that lead rope. And right there, he's still. I'm still keeping that pressure on him because he's just kind of shifting side to side, and I want a little bit of forward motion there. So because he's getting all locked up, I decide to go in and yield his hindquarters. And you can tell I have not done enough of this because instead of moving his hindquarters away, he tries to run off with his face, smacks his butt into the fence, but he's very, very locked up behind. Which makes sense because he's not moving his butt at all when I ask him to walk forward. He only moves the front legs. So I stick right with him here. I'm just keeping the pressure on the hindquarters. Right there, he moved his butt. He moved those back legs, that hindquarter. So I kind of give him a release, and you can't see it quite so well from here, but you saw him relax, lick his lips, so then I ask again. Kind of putting some pressure there, I'm shaking the rope, I'm keeping his nose pointed at me so he can't run away with his face. I really want him to move that hip. So I've got him in a spot here where the only place he can go is move his hip, but he's still not doing it. He's trying to walk away forward. I gave him a subtle release on that, but now I'm just going to go ahead and pull him all the way around. So if I walk through that space, then I won't get kicked. Um, so I'm just going to pull his head around off that pressure. He should come sideways. He understands that. There, his hips moved. So he gets a big release there. He's not sure exactly what he did right there to earn that release, but he did like it. So then I'm going to work it a couple more times because he's so sticky on the hip. He has an issue with moving into pressure instead of away from it. So like if I push him or chase him, it seemed to be a little bit of a problem where he actually comes towards me instead of away from me. And that you saw that a little bit right there on his hip too. So instead of fighting him harder, I decided to redirect it. I asked a different way till I got the response I wanted. So here I'm gonna go around again. I want him to move his hips. He's not. He's trying to brace away, so I'm getting a better hold, getting myself out of the kick zone. See how locked up he is in the back end. He wants to walk with his front feet, but his back feet do not move. So I just keep that pressure on him, letting him think about it, not upping it any because he doesn't understand what I'm asking, so I'm just continuing to ask. There, he moved his hips. So I'm going to give him a rub. Good boy. Now I'm going to ask him to go the other way, so I run that rope around the back end of him. I just want him to go off the halter pressure. I'm not worried about him responding to body language or anything right here. I'm just asking him off that halter pressure. He's falling with his nose. That's a good start, so I give him little releases right there, but then I'm holding. There. That caused him to unlock his hip a little bit, but he's mostly using, there goes the hip. I give him a big release there, and he kind of finds his way back up to face me. Then he locks up backwards again, so I just keep gentle pressure on the rope. When he moves the front leg, I finally give him the good release. So 
So here I'm going to ask again. Now you see how I have much better hindquarter movement after that. There's a lot of different ways to ask a horse to yield their hindquarters. That is just one of them. It's not necessarily my go-to, but I decided to use that tool on him because of the way he was reacting. I thought it would elicit a better response. So then here he's kind of blocking me off. So I'm going to just put that pressure on him. I'm not really worried about anything but getting him to go off the halter pressure. So I'm just finding a space where he'll give me the right answer. He didn't give it to me there. He moved his hip there. Go his legs. Good boy. And then I'm going to ask again. There go his front legs. There go his back legs. So I got both feet moving that time, and they weren't all moving in the same direction, but they're moving. He got unstuck a little bit, which is what I am going for. So now I'm going to ask him to move his hips again. Follow me around that corner, or more so follow the halter pressure. So I'm pulling him. There, his front feet start moving. I put some slack in the rope, but then I have to tighten up because he decides to go the other way. He doesn't want to move his butt away from me. There. It's really important that your horse moves their butt away from you, their hindquarters, because that is where the kicking comes from. See here, I'm asking him to move out of my space a little bit because he was just getting so stuck. Those front, you see those back feet, they just stay there. There they move, so I give him a release. But he still kind of wants to keep his hip towards me and his face away. There, he's moving again. I just want to get him moving forward. Because he wasn't coming to me as well on the just coming off the halter pressure and he wasn't getting reactive, there was no forward movement, he was just stuck, I decided to start working him on some of these lunge circles. I spin that rope at him, kind of encourage him to go forwards, and then when he goes forward and walks, I take the pressure off. So pressure on, pressure off, pressure on. Right there he gets a little bit sticky, he goes for a little bit of a run, he just wants out of the situation. We've got him moving, but now he's moving the wrong direction. So I have to readjust a little bit because I've got myself in a spot there. So then I ask him to face up. I need him to take one step forward before I can give him a big release. There. And now I can let him think about that for just a minute. He's still pretty stuck. He only moved one foot, but he's getting the idea. There's one foot but he's still going the opposite direction of me. He moved his feet, but he's taking off. You can see that his face is looking at me, but his feet are moving the opposite way. So I give him small releases there. Little gives you can barely see on the rope so that he kind of starts offering that behavior more often, but I'm still keeping pressure on until he gives me the actual step I'm looking for, the step forward. And when he gave that, I gave him a minute to think about that and reset. The reason I'm having a little bit more trouble getting this horse moving is because he kind of naturally wants to stay put. That's what made haltering and touching go so quickly because he really would just disengage and stand there and just kind of hang out and hang out inside his own head and not think about me. And leading actually requires him to open up and think about what I'm doing and move, move his feet. So he has to be actively engaged as an environment to learn this new thing. So right there, that one was pretty good, pretty calm. A little sticky in the back end, but he's responding better now. There. I'm asking for a little more in there. I got those back feet. That was awesome, so I'm giving him a good release there. I'm not even putting mental pressure on him by walking up to him. You can see him relax under that. He bl blows his nose back out. He starts licking and chewing. He actually came one more step forward with his front feet. I'm going to walk away again. Low pressure here. I'm just walking away from him in an arc. There I got some back foot movement, so I decided to take it because that we weren't getting a couple minutes ago. And then he's licking and chewing. He's thinking about coming up to me. That foot comes towards me again. Just one gentle step. Good boy. So here I'm asking again. Gentle arc away from me. There I get front feet. And he's close to moving the back. I'm going to continue to ask him. Till I get some back foot movement as well. There. And then I'm going to get myself out of this corner, ask him to follow me around. So this will get more and more fluid.
There we go. It's pretty low pressure for him to just kind of follow me in this circle. I'm not really staring at him. I'm really not even pulling on the halter too much. I'm just asking him to keep his eyes on me right there. He gave me a nice soft look, so I rewarded that. I loved that relaxation, that licking and chewing. I want to encourage that. That's a spot where he's thinking instead of locking up, and I want to really keep him thinking. So anytime he starts to soften, relax, look at me, and then really think about it, I give that a big reward. And right there, he takes a couple more steps. Big reward. All right, so here we have the next day. This is the progress we've made. You can see he's engaging with me a little bit more. He's following me a bit. I went ahead and dropped the rope right there, starting to work on a little bit of that ground tie. Um, here I'm asking to come forward again, once again, and you can see he puts up some resistance, but those light pressures and he comes right straight forward. I'm not having to pull him sideways quite as much. I give him big scratches, reassure him that that was the right thing to do. And then once he, if he's letting me touch his ears, I go for it because I like to work on their head shyness. Here I'm going to ask him to step straight forward again, just off that halter pressure. He thinks about it, and then he gives. What a good boy. So then I reassure him once again, and I played this game for a few minutes. So when I ask him to walk this time, I walk forward, he starts to follow, he's getting the hang of that. I just walk a couple little circles around the pin here, but you can see he gets a little bit, I would call aggressive right there. So he's still following me, but he's got that look on his face right there. He came towards me a little quick, right there, he nodded his head at me, so I pushed him back. He's jumpy enough at this stage that I can pretty much startle him back, but I just kind of want to remind him to, to mind his manners and he needs to walk relaxed. Maverick's back there learning to put his blanket on, so that's flying all over the place. Promise is a little worried about that, but for the most part, nothing too shabby. Now, here's something I want to note. Right here, I stopped and took a minute to coach Lauren through that moment that just happened. But Promise takes a step forward right there and actually asks to come up into my space and asks for engagement. He's really looking for some attention right there. And I wanted to take that time and give him that rub on the face because he's so shut down. The more I can get him out of his own little bubble when he reaches out and makes an effort, I want to encourage that. Here we're back to leading. He's a little stickier this direction. I just ask him to come forward, halt to pressure, and when he takes that step, little release. I put slack in the line. Right there, big pressure. He's locking up on me a bit. I'll probably take him off to the side if it doesn't work jiggling the rope. So I annoy him for a minute. He doesn't really care. He shuts down a bit. So I'll probably disengage him at some point off to the side. I keep the pressure on the rope when I go to do that. There, he actually came forward that time. Here, I'm going to put the pressure on him again. He doesn't want to come this way. Good. And then once he started getting stickier, I took him out of the pen the next day because I wanted to get him out of that tiny little space. He was responding to par halter pressure. It was just a little rough. So we get down here, and there's lots of scary stuff to see. We've got a saddle, and we've got a big black tote and a barrel and all the things to look at. He just stopped. He kind of wanted to leave, but I encourage him to stay put. I don't care if he walks around and smells things a little bit, but he cannot go back to the barn. So I just, I don't put any more pressure on him because he's stressed enough as it is. I just let him stand there and look at the things. He looks around, he thinks about it, and then he'll want to turn and get some different angles of it when he's looking at it. And I'm just going to let him hang out right here till he gets comfortable because I can't drag him through the gate. He won't. He's not broken up on the halter yet but I actually kicked to a different angle right here. You can see me pick up my own camera because um, he was being quiet enough that I didn't think he was going to jump out of my hands, but he was definitely being um, definitely a little nervous, but mostly just sniffing around. So I've got, it's important to note that I have him in, enclosed an area, in an enclosed area. This chute runs all the way to his pin, which is why I'm not quite so worried about uh, keeping a great hold on this rope because if he let if he gets away from me, no big deal. But I want to note also that I let him kind of have his spookiness. If he wants to freak out and go away, I'm just going to move with him. Now, right here, he gets a little upset, so I go ahead and drop the camera and go back to the regular one. 
Um, but right here, I'm just going to follow him through that spook. He's nervous. If I try to hold him in place, he's just going to fight me. He's still very, very green on the halter. So I don't want to tie him up. It's like how <laughs> Warwick Schiller was saying. If someone kidnapped you and then tied you up, you just fight it. So you're going to move with him until he figures out that it's not so scary, not so bad. Encourage him to face up to it. He gets a little bit upset here. But I'm not adding pressure with the halter. I actually decide to make the decision to take him away from there. I'll help him escape. And he follows me willingly. And I also decide to lock down the gate so that we can't run back into his pen because I don't want him to learn to run all the way away from it. I'll take him back and forth, pressure and release. I'll take him towards the scary thing. And then I'll take him away from the scary thing. So it's not all about me just leading him to scary things. It's about him listening to the lead rope. So I'm doing the different directions right there he's a little nervous right there I turn him away before he has a chance to get all worked up about it and this makes him curious instead of just getting in a fight with me about trying to make him go up to this scary object right there I yield his hindquarters he doesn't stop and back yet but I can yield his hindquarters for some control so here I make him go a little closer to the scary thing he's very wiggly wobbly but he almost makes it through the gate so I'm not going to get in a tug of war with him. I give him another chance to come forward, and he does it like a good boy. So he just had to have a moment there to kind of let that tension fizzle, which is why I took him up to the gate and started again. Because if I just sat there and pulled on him, he probably would have fought me more. After working through this in such a level-headed manner, he was doing so well and really enjoying coming out. So I finished out and just walked around the pen over the next couple days and walked out of the round pen out around the little pasture and he just had a grand old time there were a few moments where he got a little bit iffy a little excited a couple rares in there but it wasn't aggressive it was more directed towards just him trying to get out and stretch his legs so that is kind of promises beginning of learning to lead he's still got a long way to go on ground manners and learning how to handle stress but he handled actually being halter broken very nicely. If you enjoyed this video and are interested in seeing the rest of Promise's journey and seeing us work through some of the challenges, please hit the subscribe button and ting the little bell to get notifications of whenever I put a new video out. Have a great week.